Hello, I'm Jason Ponton, the editor-in-chief and the publisher of MIT Technology Review. With me are Andre Kavalets, the Chief Technology Officer for Hewlett Packard Enterprise Security Services, and Dave DeWalt, Chairman of the Board and the CEO of FireEye Incorporated. They've joined me today to talk about the talent shortage in cybersecurity. So let me begin with Dave. When we look at the overall talent situation in cybersecurity, more than a third of respondents racked lack of in-house expertise as their main information security challenge. And they also express significant difficulties in finding that talent. To what extent can you blame that on a lack of specialized education and training? And what else is, what else is contributing to the shortage? Yeah, it's a good question, Jason. I, I think when you look at cybersecurity today, it's probably the most germane problem that we're, we're facing is just the shortage of experts. Cybersecurity, as we know, has is, is become a very big problem in the world. A lot of different threat actors, a lot of different types of threats. But really, you almost got to look at the, you know, the root cause of why do we have a shortage in the first place. And you know, a lot of this is sort of the, the security marketplace in general, the way I see it. I've been in the, in the industry now for quite a few years. The prevailing wisdom has always been, let's put defense in depth in place. And whenever a new threat came along, we put a new vendor in place. And over time, the idea of lots of vendors, lots of products was sort of the, the current state of most security architectures today, especially larger companies. But what really happens when you have 100 different security vendors, well then you get millions of alerts per day. Mm -hmm. And if you have hundreds of vendors, you get millions of alerts today, every day, you can't afford to miss one alert. Mm -hmm. And that happened to a couple of companies, they missed an alert and it caused a somewhat catastrophic uh, breach. And so what has to happen is people have to be in place to look at the alerts. So more alerts, more vendors, more people required, ultimately a talent shortage. And here we are today, and if you look at the education system that we have in place around the world, there's very few, um, almost zero, higher education institutions that have not only curriculums in cybersecurity, but programs that are really preparing professionals to enter the workforce. And that's a bit of our challenge. If you look at both the education system and the model, both are contributing to this overall shortage. Yeah. yeah. Where you, you agree find with that? Them, Andre? Yeah. That's an amazing question. And there's, there's two things. There's that supply and demand question. There just aren't enough people, and that's right. because the education institutions aren't developing them. It's become a very academic subject, and actually it's an operational challenge. That you know what they've described is an operational challenge about putting people at the center of the technology and the process that's there. But the other piece that, you know, the evolution is happening so quickly. You know, somebody with current and vital security skills five years ago, those skills are not the skills you need today. The world's changing. Those three massive sort of waves of change being new technology being, you know, constant sustained attack by amazing adversaries and change in privacy regulations. All of those waves are coming together and creating a demand and a need for capability. But we're not seeing the sort, of the, the sort of mirroring of training schemes, of talent management, of not only hiring, but you know, developing staff who move into these areas and, and then you know, helping them build their careers over time. So that transitional part to it is, is hugely important. So no matter how well prepared a cybersecurity team is currently to prevent, detect, yeah. and respond to threats and breaches, the truth is, is cyber attackers are constantly refining their, their approaches, their methodologies, their capabilities to circumvent those very defenses. So organizations have to be consistently and continuously updating their techniques. Just how nimble and up-to-date are most company security teams these days? I think the, the honest truth is they're not that nimble. I think people are still operating against a sort of an architectural view of security that has a perimeter at the heart of it, that has control and protection rather than being able to respond and create a resilient organization. And that's a change in mindset. There's, a, there's an assumption of compromise, which if you accept right from the board down, allows you to start to think, I need a nimble, adaptive, resilient organization rather than one that just protects. And I think that's the change that you need to instill. And that's why... You know, we've started to invest in and help build a, you know, a cyber MBA in the UK. It's why we're, you know, really helping 
get different people into the security workforce because we're addressing different challenges now, a legal challenge, a privacy challenge, a, you know, a communications challenge, not just the amazing shortage of you know, forensic skills and people who understand adversaries and those kind of things. So it's a, it's a patchwork that an organization needs to address to maintain and you know, maintain that resilience and become, you know, I think your word, sort of adaptive. Mm. And it's a very hard one to do because of the constantly shifting technology and adversary sounds. Andre, you hit on something earlier that I really resonate with, you know, sort of these waves, mm. I call it the perfect storm in a way, you know, just different analogy, but what's happening is most security professionals are up against, you know, a, a, a whole series mm. of things coming together, not just the attack surface that we have to deal with, you know, once was just Windows and Microsoft being attacked, now we have Apple platforms, Google platforms, cloud platforms, we have satellite uplinking communications as well as fiber link mm. communications, SCADA systems, so a lot has happened with technology. It keeps moving fast. Throw on there a sort of lack of governance and privacy yeah. that's holding us back, anonymity on the internet. Security professionals are up against a lot of kind of high barriers. So not only do you have this shortage, you got this kind of kind of almost perfect storm hits them, and then you sort of look at the offense that we're up against. Yeah. We have nation state grade attackers. You know, many times military intelligence operations behind the keyboard highly well funded, you know, very educated themselves, and in most cases have a lot more resources than the defense happens to have. So in their lives, why many of them are not that nimble yeah. and why ultimately they get breached. So Absolutely. hold that thought, David. Let's answer a final question about resources. In FireEye's 2016 M-Trends report, you said that most organizations are not adequately staffing, equipping, training, and exercising uh, their detection teams. HPE's Cyber Risks Report 2016 also notes that IT resources, usually budget and staff, are constrained, especially mm -hmm. in small to mid-sized companies. So what can companies with very limited staff, time, and money do to defeat cyber attackers, given that many of them are, as you say, nation states, or at least mm -hmm. very sophisticated criminal enterprises? partnerships. And you know, a little why we're here today talking about HP and FireEye together is we have a lot of experts. A lot of our experts come from military backgrounds themselves, red teaming exercises, things that really exercise detection at a company. Not every corporation can afford to have those experts in their company, so there is partnerships that allow us to help automate that process. And the prevailing wisdom over the years was, you know, once a year let's do a pen test, a penetration test, or a vulnerability assessment. Well, every corporation is vulnerable. Every corporation can be penetrated. The question is, are you breached? How big is the breach? What's the risk of that breach? And how do you bring in partnerships to help you understand your risk, exercise that risk, understand if you're compromised? Those are the real questions, not do I have a vulnerability and can I get penetrated? So how to shift that? That's the mentality that's needed today. And I think innovation like we're doing is helping in that area. Yeah. And then the word you used about partnership and collaboration. If there's one thing that the adversaries do better than we do. It's innovate, it's collaborate, it's share knowledge. There's no, there are no sort of legal boundaries to how they do that because they're operating outside the realms of law and international treaty. So it's a beholden on us, I think, to work together on behalf of small and medium-sized businesses and even large enterprises who don't have that scale mm -hmm. of, of organization, who don't have the resource resources and the research teams that we have. So we have to work together with other academic institutions and other partners to give a composite view of what's happening in the world and to give them access to advanced risk management skills, you know, amazing you know, intelligence that allows they can get ahead of the threat. And also training about how a SOC analyst is able to scan those multitude of events and you know, automated tools to allow them to keep on top of that constant wave of attacks. Um, you know, I, it's a team game, and, it, and it, so I think the basic thing is if you stand alone and try to do it on your own, it will feel very lonely. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, Dave DeWalt, Chairman of the Board and CEO of FireEye, and Andre Kavalets, Chief Technology Officer for Hewlett Packard Enterprise Security Services. I'm Jason Ponton, the Editor-in-Chief and Publisher of MIT Technology Review.